Let me welcome in everybody who's joining now. So welcome Sarita in Portland, Hannah in New York, Rose in Austria, Anya in Germany, welcome Michael in Poland, Hannah in the UK, Brigitte in Belgium, welcome Ria in the Netherlands, Jewel in UK. Wonderful, so glad to have you all here. I know more people are joining. So welcome, Woman Stand Shining, Pat McCabe. It's truly an honor to have you here as a part of our event. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm so honored to be here and, uh, and to be able to see you. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, this is, I guess this is our way of catching up a little bit here. So it's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good to have these catch ups every once in a while. <laughs> well, let me introduce you to everybody, Pat. So Woman Stand Shining, Pat McCabe, is a Diné or Navajo mother, grandmother, activist, artist, writer, ceremonial leader, and international speaker. She is a voice for global peace, and her paintings are created as tools for individual, earth, and global healing. She draws upon the indigenous sciences of thriving life to reframe questions about sustainability and balance, and she is devoted to supporting the next generations, women's nation and men's nation, in being functional members of the hoop of life and upholding the honor of being human. And as I said, we're truly honored to have you here, Pat. So, well, I'm thinking about where, where to begin, where to begin our conversation. And since we're here in the initiation portal, <laughs> um, you know, it's, I, 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 guess, I guess one place that we could start is that this year, 2020 has been quite a year. Um, there's been so much going on and it's been like the brightest light and also the darkest shadows all coming up. Um, so do you, what, what insights do you have with us? What thoughts do you have about what, what might be most important for us to know as we navigate this time and as we have complete our last two months of 2020 and move into 2021, what can we focus on? Um, well, I want to say greetings to each and everyone who's joining us here today. Thank you for uh, joining in this circle and um, I'm sure you've already done this at, at other times, but I'll do it here for myself joining in this part of our process. Um, I couldn't begin to do all this Zooming. <laughs> it would be exhausting <laughs> and difficult, um, but part of what makes it, uh, makes me be able to keep doing it is to keep dedicating each Zoom to just dedicating and, and making that call and, and, and prayer. So maybe I'll start that way, actually, Jocelyn, if that's okay. Um, that'd be wonderful. So I just wanna say, uh, greet each, each one of you who came to be here and let's, let's, let's know that um, this is uh, uh, a way that your footsteps have been led to receive something today. And that's true for me also. Let's say that um, that we can we can know that um, we came here with purpose. We came to this earth at this time with purpose, but we also came to this gathering today for purpose. And so I want to call in um, the larger community. I want to call in the sacred hoop of life, all life that's here on this mother earth in all the many different forms. I want to call upon all the water and acknowledge the water here. Uh, this amazing. Uh, medicine. We can't really even know everything that this one is. We know a little bit about it. We know that we need it. We know that all life needs it. So that's a good starting place. But, but as, we, as we've been saying, this, this isn't just life. It's alive. This one's alive and has consciousness. So imagine all life needing this one, all life needing this consciousness. Um, and the way this consciousness is, is, is transmitted from one to another. So there's there's a lot going on right here. And so I just want to acknowledge this water at this time. There's a lot of places crying out for water that are, you know, engulfed in fires and such. Um, we had some big fires here in New Mexico and then we just got like 20 inches of snow <laughs> dumped all at once. Oh so grateful for that water coming. Um, I want to invite in the spiritual community that stands with the earth, that stands with the earth's um, placement in the solar system, the solar system 
that holds its place in the galaxy and the galaxy that holds its place in the cosmos. And to know that, that, uh, that we are microcosms of that construct as well, <laughs> and that there is consciousness running in that, um, in that alignment and in that um, timing of, of, of the rotations and the orbiting and, and such. Um, so there, there is consciousness that is holding that in a certain way and that we as earth beings are, are also a part of that movement. Hmm. So I want to call in all the, all the helpers of each one of us, helpers, teachers, guides, healers, protectors, providers, playmates, encouragers, comforters, those who are committed to life and light and love. We reach out to you at this time and we invite you to come and be here. We invite you to, to move through us and, and I invite you and I ask you, as I, as I already have to those helpers to, that, that were called forth today to, to help me to get out of the way and, and let your voice be the one here. Um, and let us, let, let us dedicate this time together to, uh, to be, move ever deeper into full participation in our full capacities as this human being, but also um, spiritual being uh, multi-dimensional being um, show us you know how to move ever deeper in this time to participate fully in the very highest possibility for life and light and love and let what we do here inform all the life all the life that is thriving and all the life that is suffering on this mother earth that, that the five-fingered ones are gathered here today we're gathered here for purpose. We're gathered here to offer our heart. We're gathered here to offer our humility as well as our exaltation for being placed on this magnificent Mother Earth and, and that we are, we are reaching for life. We are reaching for light. <laughs> we are reaching for love. Let, let all life feel that. Feel that. And let, let, let what is all this energy that is for this purpose that's growing spread out across this Mother Earth bless each and every one all life all of our relations all of our humanity and uh, shine grace and light down upon it all that we can move with the destiny of this mother earth so um, by us and for all my relations mm -hmm. that's pretty much it <laughs> That's what's important, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll talk a little bit about 2020. I'll talk about my 2020, which is probably our 2022, right? Um, so this year, uh, you know, I, I was flying, literally flying all over the place, uh, just nonstop, all over the world, you know? And, and I really trust that. I really trust that that was exactly what I was meant to do. That that's what I came here to do, and that was in alignment with my path and purpose. Um, and so, right, right before the the, sh the the lockdown period came with the pandemic, um, I had just come from uh, Jordan, Israel, and Palestine. And um, boy, boy, what a gathering that was! Uh, we had about 22 different faiths with us, and people from all over the world trying to travel incognito, about 150 of us in these giant tour buses, <laughs> trying to keep a low profile. I was like, yeah. So anyway, but it was really amazing and beautiful things happened there. And then, um, and then I was to be, to be home for like 10 days or something. And then I was going to go to Australia and then London and then Ireland. And so that's how my life was. I was just like, Shh. And you know what I was told about that was that I that, that in a way I was um, I was well I was weaving I was weaving um, a a lattice of some kind, um, and so I didn't really get to have many details of it, which I like it better that way. The fewer details, the better for me. I just like to know that I'm on track as long as I know I'm on track. So basically, I get sent to these places and they just tell me, you know, you be you, you lay down the prayer that you. That you lay down, and so that's that's what I've been doing. And um, 
but what was happening in that process is I was, you know, part of me was really getting separated. Uh, like my, my ability to be a local person in my rural Northern community uh, of Northern New Mexico. I'm, I'm here, I forgot to say, I'm here at my mama's house in New Mexico right now. We're companions together. She's 96, almost going to be 97 and still, uh, still quite lucid and mobile and everything. So, but anyway, um, so I, I was really disconnecting a lot from my place. And so it was very painful because there was a lot going on there as there is in every place with our water, with our land, with our politics, with our children, with everything, you know? And so to, to, you know, I started being kind of viewed with a little bit of suspicion in a way because I was never there. So I, I was no longer indigenous to Dallas. <laughs> People were like, I don't know what you're doing, but you're like gone all the time. And, you know, every now and then you pop up. And so that was painful, but there were other ways that I was being separated from myself. You know, that kind of lifestyle is really difficult to, to maintain any kind of intimacy with anybody. And, um, and so, so when, when the brakes got slammed on and um, I had to stay home uh, and then I went into taking care of my mom at her house, uh, what I, I, I got sick, I got really sick. I don't, you know, I got tested for COVID and, and they said it was negative, but boy, it was deep in my lungs and I got laid out for almost three months. And um, very, very humbling. Uh, and, and also, um, you know, I was doing a lot of my, some of my deepest, uh, I call it, you know, when I'm transcending my, my human only experience, sometimes I really have to move through some trauma. And so I was doing a lot of that work around some deep family stuff. And, uh, and I was just like laid out in like my childhood family home. <laughs> so there was like no escape. But what was really coming up for me was I was told, you know, I, I asked my lungs finally, because it was just not moving very much. And I just finally said, you know, what can I do? What do you need from me? What are you asking for? And my lungs really were very clear. They said, you have been neglecting your heart's desire. And, uh, and so I thought, wow, like you've been neglecting your heart's desire so deeply that it, now it's even come into your lungs. The grief is so intense. And so I um, started thinking about that and I thought, well, well, what is my heart's desire? You know, one of my deepest, what I knew about my heart's desire was that I'm, I'm traveling on the spirit road wherever spirit calls me. And I was doing that, but, but, you know, every time I'd come home, I'd have this restlessness and, and, and difficulty um, and loneliness and, um, you know, I talked with this, with this musician friend of mine and he said, you have, you have rock star syndrome. <laughs> Cause he was talking about, you know, what it was like to tour. Is he like tour? And it's like all amped up and you know, everything's firing. And then you go home and then you're like, you're lost. And I was like, oh, that's what it is. But it wasn't, it wasn't only that, you know, and um, not that I, I don't totally, I don't really see myself as rock star, but I definitely get the traveling and having high intensity and coming back. And then like it just being sort of, uh, well, much less intense, right? And so anyway, I was asking, you know, about this and, and what, what I was told was, you know, you're, you're missing relationships, like you've ruled out relationships, one-on-one um, -on -one relationships and, and deep connections with others in this jetting around the place. And so I, that's what I've been really working on is, um, is really connecting more one-on-one -on -one with others and so, you know, at that point, I, um, you know, I'd get on some Zoom calls with some groups that I'd been a part of, and, and all I could just, I'd just sit there and weep at the, at the sight of the faces of the people and realizing that, that I just hadn't really been seeing them. I hadn't really been connecting to them, <laughs> and I hadn't really been valuing them. That was the hardest part to look at. It was like, you're not valuing people. You're like, but, well, that was hard. But, but another part that goes along with that was, you know, it was also me doing this. It served. It served my my orientation to be jetting around and not have to be intimate with folks because there was a part of me that had given up on it on some level. So that's what I had to to work on and bring back bring back around. And I hadn't had haven't had a companion for I don't know seven years or so. So it's been a while. <laughs> 
And, um, and, and so what I realized was that my, my, that sensuous aspect of myself as being the female um, had kind of just been like bound up and, and thrown down in the basement somewhere, you know, she was, and, uh, and so in order to really heal my lungs uh, and to, to really be in, in full presence of myself, I had to like go down into the basement and ungag her and untie her and eventually let her come upstairs and let her be a part of the situation, you know, and um, I guess what I'll say about that is I, I really feel that, you know, as, as the feminine, as the female of our kind, you know, that there is, that has been suppressed um, in so many different ways to the point of where then we became great suppressors of ourselves. And in a way, that's what I'm describing. Um, you know, we, we have a very big role to play right now in this Mother Earth. Well, I mean, all of us do. But I'm just noticing our part as the female of our kind of the five fingered ones. And what I'm really, really clear on, and maybe some, I'm sure many of you knew this already, but um, is that without that sensuous aspect of the feminine, that full power cannot come to bear. And so that's been a big part of my um, awakening <laughs> right now is to integrate, you know, and, and I will say that, you know, as a, as certainly as a native woman, um, people ha have preconceived notions of what I'm supposed to be <laughs> and how I'm supposed to be. And so, you know, I, I didn't just do this to myself. Um, in groups that I would go to, people expect me to behave like a medicine woman should. I don't really call myself a medicine woman, but a lot of people have put that label on me, but they have this idea about how that would be. And I gotta tell you for, I don't know if this is true for, I don't know, anyway, for me, that does not include a sensuous aspect. You know, that's not supposed to be there for a native woman. <laughs> and, um, and so I could either be like this, you know, I, and, and, and for the men who were viewing me, I felt like, you know, they could either see me as being this medicine woman, in which case they treated me like a Madonna, like a virgin Madonna or something. And then, or if they really understood the part of me that really loves rock and roll and really love, has a very body sense of humor, and um, and such, you know, if they really got that part, they could not conceive of that part of me that the, how deep my, my spiritual commitment is, because those two things still in this world don't go together, you know. And so, so even inside of myself, I sort of allowed that to 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 do it even with me for me. And then I happened to meet this wonderful gentleman across the world, and um, and he could see both parts clearly and it, it was it was a non-issue it was a non-issue for him that these two parts coexisted in this same woman so um you know that that was pretty much all that that was meant to be it's it's not something that's going to continue but but boy what a gift that was to to be become integrated to feel myself and see myself as integrated and so I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know what the world's going to do with me, but I know I, <laughs> I embrace all of that. I embrace all parts of that together. And, and I'm feeling myself um, moving in a very different way in the world right now. And, and I'm being received in a very different way in the world right now. And, and I'm feeling a medicine of my femininity coming forward in in a new way. I'm going to say one more piece that's coming up around this, and then maybe we'll see what's going on. But um, but I want to say that you know, um, having sons, I have four sons, <laughs> and uh, they um, they're teaching me a lot about men, uh, and and manhood. And what I've had to realize as their mom is that I, I've had to change as they've grown into men. 
I can't be that same person to them. Um, I'm inclined to call them baby all the time. And after like, I'm, I'm working on like, just why don't you try just like withdrawing some of that and just like call them something else, you know, give them a, honor this, honor this place that they're in, you know, and things like that. But, but it goes much deeper than that. And that is that, you know, so with Standing Rock, for those of you who know Standing, what took place at Standing Rock, the big stand against um, the laying of the oil pipeline across the Cannonball River and across um, the Standing Rock uh, Lakota Sioux, or maybe it was Dakota Sioux Reservation there, um, when the world gathered to to stand with indigenous peoples, like for one of the first times, it was a it was a big global event. It was a I don't know when that's ever happened on the planet. It was really something. But my sons, some of, two of my sons were there, and you know what they learned there was that you know because there was some pretty fierce stuff going on. Was that was that they needed to get the input of the elder woman before they ever took any direct action. Wow, huh? that was like when they came home. And that was the value and principle that they held. It just blew me away because I had not seen that with my sons. I had not been able to transmit that to my sons. And, and I guess I'm going to say, I didn't really know how to do that. And I'm still learning. And so this is what I want to talk about also is that, so when, so when we, they came home and there were water issues going on in our valley, Taos Valley, there were these deep aquifer water drilling rigs that they were proposing, many of them that were going to change the whole, uh, water system that we had going on there uh, maybe forever, right? And so my sons wanted to stand against that. And so they came to me and, and not only my sons, but these other young warriors, they came to me as elder woman and invited me to be that voice of counsel, invited me to their meetings, invited me to their actions. They wanted my input. And I got to tell you, I have never been approached like that. You know, it it called upon part of my femininity that I had never known. It, it does not occur in modern world paradigm, frankly. And so all of a sudden I was finding myself being called out to something new. And I want to say that um, I did my best. And ultimately, you know, I, I'm going to say that I felt like that I encountered a part of my colonization um, that frankly came from the, the hippie culture that I was around a lot <laughs> here in New Mexico and in California too. You know, it was like peace and love, peace and love. And, and I'm still behind that. I mean, I'm still like violence is absolutely a last resort. But I have to acknowledge that there are places where I'm not sure I would say it, it has no place. Gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this on, on this in this forum. But but bear with me here and hopefully people who hear will listen to this whole part not just that one part but you know people have a right to defend their bodies people have a right to defend their um that which ca cannot defend itself women children elders people have a right to and this is a little bit of a stretch it gets complicated have a right to defend what sustains their lives food clothing and shelter and sometimes i think it can come down to the place of, of even if it involves violence. I don't, I'm someone who says, I'm never going to want to be an initiator of violence. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, um, I hope my sons never are the initiators of violence, unprovoked. But, you know, they were coming to me. I mean, this is our water system. And they were telling me, I remember this one young man looking at me by the fire one night and he said, Auntie, I could stop that water drilling rig such that it would never function again and they would never see me coming. Just say the word, Auntie. And he gave me this giant smile, you know, and it like froze my blood. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> I felt like, wow, I am the only thing keeping him from doing that. And if I asked him to do it, he would go and do it. And so this is calling upon a part of my femininity that is unfamiliar to me. And I bring it up because I feel like in these days to come, we're gonna be called on in certain ways. And so what I'm gonna say is this, is that with this feminine rising movement, and it's a long time coming, it has to come. I'm in no way saying it should not come, it has to come. But I'm keeping an eye now on our circles because as feminine rising comes, I'm seeing that we are, you know, like me, uh, we are, we are in modern world paradigm, we are oriented to say, you know, 
no violence ever for any reason. No, and almost to the point of no um, opposition. Um, and, and so there's, there's a line there that we've got to watch because I feel like our circles, our women's circles, as, as women are asked to step up into leadership roles in circles, as their voices are being heard, at least in equal time in circles, I want to keep an eye on, am I castrating sacred warrior medicine with my view, with my holding? Now, that's a hard thing because it's like de feminine has to decolonize in real time, masculine has to decolonize in real time in order for us to really hold this sacred space about when is it time? You know, I think in the old cultures, it had to have fallen to the elder women to, to be the ones to say, okay, now is the time for the warriors to go and defend us. And that's a, man, that's a deep, deep line. I mean, I guess in some ways uh, in modern world paradigm, maybe it's the archetypal queen's role. Not the queen who has fallen into um, greed and selfishness, but the, but the queen who is talking about all the children will be fed the land will be cared for, the elders will be happy, kind of a queen. And that's her place to be able to say, you know, okay, now is the moment where I need the warriors to come forth and stand for us, stand for the water, stand for the land. And so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna ask us who are involved in the women's circles and, and or any circles, to keep an eye out for, I mean, I want to at least hear, and I especially like to hear from the men who have, who have put women in leadership, but are still sitting there. So thank you to all the men. I don't, I don't know, this is probably men and women's uh, summit, but I feel like there's probably more women here than men would be my guess. And so I just thank all the men who are here. Um, but I just, I want, I want to hear from that sacred warrior voice. And that's going to be a tricky thing for us to navigate, but that's something that's really arising for me. So I'll, I'll, that, that's how my 2020 has been. <laughs> and um, I'll stop there for the moment. Thank you so much. Uh, I had chills and major heart flutters during much of what you said. And, and I, one thing, one thing for sure, I would, I would love to just, just, you know, highlight that you said is these, um, parts of ourselves that feel like they're at paradox with each other right but they're existing within us like the the sensual nature versus the um ceremonial leader in, in in what you described or this can happen in many different ways you know i know i know for me it comes up a lot as the mother right versus the, the one who knows I need to be out there doing this, you know, this work as I'm guided by spirit and those two things seem to pull me, you know, they pull me in different directions at many times, sometimes in the same direction, but often in different directions. So just kind of inviting everybody in the audience to think of where, where in you are these paradoxes, these pieces that seem to be at odds with each other. And if you want to share anything about that in the chat, it's welcome, you know, certainly welcome to, but I, yeah, I feel like, tell me if you agree, Pat, I feel like this year we've had a really, quite a chance to get very clear on our values and what's actually really important. And this, uh, this one part of many important parts that you brought up, this one part sort of certainly seems like something um, really critical for us to, to get clear on honoring all parts of ourselves and how to help them live in peace with each other, with one another. Yes. Yes, I do think this is a very big refining time, a refining time of truth. <laughs> the truths that we have held, um, are they really true? How are they really holding up in the face of importance, the importance of life, the importance of elders, children, uh, water, etc. cetera? Um, and yeah, a refinement of values and a refinement of what I'm going to call on from myself, because you know, as as chaotic as this time is, as I'm sure you've probably been discussing here, you know, it's also cracking things open that seem like they could never be cracked, right? Like institutions and I don't know laws even, and it, like it's all just it's sort of being cracked open, and 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 new possibilities are are there where they weren't before, right? And so. 
so for myself, I feel the same inside of myself. So, I, so I, but, but before then, you know, um, uh, the way things were going, and I'm going to say it was antithetical to life, to life principle from indigenous perspective or from any earthlings perspective. And so I felt like I had developed certain habits. So we could call them um, addictions or just ways of thinking or ways of even shielding heart or you know so i didn't i had this whole repertoire of ways of coping with an uncopable situation <laughs> and so all of a sudden now that it's cracking open everything one i get confronted with this i say all of a sudden everybody's like you know um in forced treatment in their house all of a sudden you know <laughs> like, like <laughs> and um and and so so it's all being cracked open to 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 be faced and then that was pretty shocking and now i feel like i'm coming to this place of really deciding like what what do i want to move forward with some of my obsessions and compulsions like just this morning i'm like really praying about my thinking there are certain there are certain so you so sure there's alcohol there's there's mind altering substance, marijuana, all, you know, and I've chosen at this time, you know, and it's part of my lineage to say, you know, no, I'm, I'm going to abstain from these things. And then I've also, but I've also watching some of the other things like my obsessions with um, painful thoughts. And I realized that they take me away from uh, what's going on around me, from the people that are around me, from the relationships that are around me, for the possibilities of what I could be creating, um, just as much as if I were just like laying down, passed out, drunk, you know? I mean, it's like these painful thoughts. Um, so habitual thoughts that aren't really present, that aren't, that, that don't really serve the opening, that don't really serve uh, my possibilities, like I'm, I'm asking for that divine intervention for those to be removed. And I, and I'll say flat out, I'm helpless before these obsessions. They are so natural to me. They, they've been there for ever. And, and now I, I, I have to give them up. So I'm calling in that divine assist, assistance and I'm calling in that divine within me to, to, to interrupt that and say, you know what? I, I need to have strength of mind in a new way. And I need to have the strength of my heart in a new way to meet what's coming and what I'm co-creating, to, to be a really um, aligned co-creator in this amazing time of possibilities, right? So I'll just I'll name that as well. Yeah, many beautiful comments here from people. Thank you all for sharing your paradoxes here. Yes. And um, also, I, I remember you saying one time, Pat, that what if our, um, what if our president or the leader of our country was elected by the Council of Grandmothers? Right? <laughs> and what a powerful thought, you know, and then you mentioned here that the, you know, these decisions to take action, decisions on whether to go to war, you know, being, being, or, or, or make this, you know, bold kind of sort of political move or, you know, community move um, determined by the, the grandmother. And so I wonder if there's more there to, to discuss um, that just, that feels so powerful to me as we're really, I mean, our, our governments, not just in the US, but in many places around the world are really being called into question and like what, you know, if this is, this is not a democracy. What is it, right? And what, what do we want to build? Um, and we see these, the government, you know, crumbling in different ways in different places. So there's um, a, a huge opportunity to build something completely new at this time. And um, it seems that the elder, the elder wisdom, the grandmothers and grandfathers, it seems that we would have much to, much to learn from them. And um, yeah, I just wonder if you have anything more to say about that. 
Well, you know, a minute ago I was talking about, um, wow, it's like sort of like decolonizing in real time <laughs> the feminine and the masculine in order to really address sacred warrior and to, and to address sacred elder woman or maybe that archetype of the queen. And I'm going to say that modern world paradigm doesn't know very much about that yet, still, but, but it's being called forth right now. So I want to say that um, uh, I, I got to back up and go to some of my go-tos here to lay out some foundation for what I'm saying, what I'm really, what I'm really trying to say here. And that is that, you know, um, at one point, and you've heard me say this, Jocelyn, my spirit guide said to me, you know, your understanding of cause and effect is rudimentary. It's rudimentary. And, you know, they're scolding me. And I said, wow, okay. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you when you say, I mean, I always believe them. I have to believe them. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I, I accept that. I take that in. And, and, um, and I said, so, so, so teach me. What other kinds of cause and effect can I participate in that I don't know about right now? And they were, and it was like they were going, oh, <laughs> yes, you know? And so I feel like this summit that you're calling together is kind of a gathering of the people who might've had a similar conversation and are, mm -hmm. and are being shown different kinds of cause and effect. Okay. And uh, that's what I imagine, that's what I hope for here. And um, so anyway, what they said to me was, okay, well, for starters, just to, just to get you going here, you know, if all times are happening at the same time, what is possible? If all times are happening at the same time, what is possible? Hmm, well that changes pretty much everything, right? Um, just that proposition, you know, in, in modern world paradigm and, and in many human paradigms, you know, we're um, taught that time moves in a linear fashion. It's just like going like this, it's moving, and we like to think it's going like this. <laughs> You know, we're getting better and better and better and more and better and more and better and more and better. But, um, but what if it's not? And what if, what if you can redo the past? And what if you are sitting in the future? Um, so, so that was one of the first things they said. And, um, and so they've been proposing many things to me. So another thing they said to me was, um, uh, you know, they said, you can have it any way you want it. They're talking about humanity. You guys, you could have it any way you want it. And right now you're saying you want it like this. But you can have it any way you want it. Just know that. And so, so I want to propose that, you know, paradigm is a choice. Clearly, that's what they're saying. You know, this is a free will construct. This is a free will construct. And so I think um, uh, that's a really deep basis for us to begin with. That, and, and, and I feel like I have a contribution to make to that in a very concrete way by being here as an indigenous person. I was started out in modern world paradigm on the road to fame and fortune and glory and riches, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was being put in all the high academic institutions and such, um, but it was killing me. It was hurting my heart and soul. So I had to, I had to, fortunately, I found a, I had a helper, a wild man who helped me abandon that road and, and took me to the highlands and rural northern New Mexico. So, um, and every, and nothing has been the same. And I have not a single regret for making that choice when I was what, 22 years old. Thank goodness. Um, but, uh, um, or and, you know, I, I eventually was called or I put out a call and I didn't know what I was calling to, you know, I hit, I hit, I hit the wall in terms of being able to do what I could do under my own power, my own willpower, willing it through, thinking it through all of that. And so I put, sent this call out and what came back to me was an indigenous practice. What came back to me was the Lakota spiritual way of life. And I've been on that road for about 27 years now, which is, they say, makes me a baby in that way. <laughs> um, and so, so, I, so what I say is my greatest gift to the world is describing my journey from modern world paradigm into another human paradigm. And so my privilege here and my offering is to be able to say, as an indigenous person, 
I have to live in two very different paradigms in this world. Um, I don't really have a choice, at least from in, in where I am sitting here in the United States. That other paradigm is going to come in on me. And yet I also hold this paradigm that's coming through my blood and coming through through my practice. And, and so I ha now I'm realizing this is such a privilege because if you were born into modern world paradigm and you can't go somewhere and find ceremonies and you can't, don't have grandmothers to go back to and you don't have a people that are practicing a paradigm outside of modern world paradigm, then you will be here and you will be thinking, wow, this is just how the earth is. The earth is Wall Street. The earth is uh, pharmaceuticals. The earth is, you know, um, like that's just how it is, <laughs> you know? And, and so I'm really, I'm really in this place of huge compassion and also awe that I get to sit in a different place. So what I'm bringing is I'm saying, I know that different paradigms can exist in this same place under these same circumstances, the same water, the same sky, the same sun, the same air, everything, because I'm around peoples all over the world who don't live in modern world paradigm. I mean, they're, it's invading, it's a constant invasion, but they're holding, they're holding that line as best they can. And I'm gonna say, we need to be paying attention to these people. We need to be standing with them and helping them because they are uh, not only evidence of another paradigm, but I'm gonna say they actually are the premier scientists of, of sustainability, of how to live on earth as a human being. Now listen to this, as a human being that causes all life to thrive. I mean, that's what modern world says it desperately wants to know about. So yeah, let's pay attention to what's happening to these indigenous peoples worldwide. They actually are holding pieces of that understanding, if not, if not the whole understanding intact. So even if we don't get to enter all the way into those worlds and practices, which we may or may not be able to, they are still important for us, for every single one of us. So for myself, um, you know, I'm, 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 I have to lay that as a foundation before I start talking about changes in the modern world. Because I want you to know that, that, that as I'm speaking, you may be hearing this in stereo. <laughs> you may, or, or only mono, you know, um, if you're only hearing it through modern world paradigm, you're not getting the full meaning of what I'm saying. And, and I don't know, I do everything I can to help us get the full meaning. And then you might be hearing it in stereo, which is both at once. So just know that we're, we're sort of having several conversations here at once, speaking of multidimensionality, right? Um, because it's hard to understand what I'm saying from modern world paradigm. And, I'm, and, that's, and that's where the caution comes in. In fact, when I reread what our subject matter was today, Jocelyn, part of me was like, oh no, like I contract, I contract because I, I, I wanna be careful because things, things that get, things that I'm saying that get filtered through modern world paradigm come, come across in a different way. And that's why indigenous peoples have caution. It's not only this vindictiveness of like, you guys messed with us and hurt us and we're not gonna share nothing with you. I mean, there is some of that for sure. But, but the elders, you know, they're like, man, you know, we have to be, we have to be mindful of what we're, saying and what we're giving out there when people can't actually sit in our consciousness and from our paradigm looking out right so just know that that's part of part of what the whole appropriation uh, conversation is about if we understand where it's coming from that's a little bit helpful to us i think um so let's see what was i going to ask the answer your question about um the elder women's leadership in this government government system um, I'm going to say that, uh, hmm, well, I'll just be honest. I, I'm ignoring the election entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, just I, I can't, I can't, I just can't. Um, and I don't feel like I, I'm, you know, I'm not ignoring the election entirely and cowering in a corner um, doing crossword puzzles. No, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm staying with my trajectory and I have faith and I have confidence I have faith and I have confidence in my trajectory. <laughs> Why? Because I've been praying, <laughs> because I've been praying and asking to be shown and to be led for decades now. And, and so I trust that my guides have been preparing me meticulously I mean, I know they have. I know they have. Even being sent to Phillips Exeter Academy when I was young <laughs> was a part of my preparation for now. Not, not, and, and the ceremonies and the travel and everything. You know, I'm, I came here with a path, a sacred path. And so did you. You came here with a sacred path. And so... I'm going to trust that all of these experiences, even the devastations, man, there were some devastations growing up in a family recovering from attempted genocide. Woo. Yeah. Even that, you know, is, is pre preparing me for this moment. And, and so it's not that I'm ruling out, you know, course adjustments. I mean, we started out talking about some pretty big course adjustments that I'm making inside of myself, reconciling these paradoxes that Jocelyn's bringing up. But, but I trust this path that I'm on. And so I don't feel like I have to, like, abandon everything and start over, which I'm watching a lot of, you know, go on. And, and I feel for that. And I'm still inquiring, what can I do to help in those situations? But first, I'm like getting myself solid in this knowledge that no, I think you've been being led this whole time and, and all of it has led you to this moment. Even that illness you had was, was I, I called it my journey to the underworld. Man, I got taken all the way down to the underworld and everything, just, just in case anybody else went through this, and it, everything that I had ever been clinging to, my sacred ceremonies, I'm a, I'm, I carry a sacred pipe. I couldn't go to the pipe. I couldn't, I just, I couldn't reach for anything that I knew. It was just like I was in, black, blind, deaf. But the one thing that I could hold on to, and the reason that I cry, just about burst into tears a minute ago, is because my spirit helpers love me. We are so loved by our spiritual helpers. You know, our elders say that each one of us who was sent here with so many spiritual helpers, they are swarming all around us, only waiting for our request to ask for their help. They can't do it unless we ask. And so even in that darkness, I could say, even though I can't feel you, I can't see you, I can't hear you. And my mind, big part of my mind wants to say, you blew it. You must have screwed up so bad. They just freaking abandoned you. They just like dumped you off in the bad neighborhood and they're, they're gone, you know. Uh, but, but that part of me that couldn't even though I couldn't feel it in my heart or my body actually my mind did help me there and I could just my mind would just say you know what they never have and they keep telling you they never will do that so just know that there's something going on here that must go on it's for your good it's for your gift it's for your path and 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 we shall see so I popped up out of the underworld and I'm like dancing around like a like a wild woman in euphoria as everybody else is like having this massive global breakdown. <laughs> I mean, not everybody, but so many people. I feel like totally inappropriately jubilant. But I'm like, man, I'm going to go with this jubilation because it can get rare sometimes, man. It can, it can disappear. So I got to just go with it. I'm going to go with it, even if it's hard on the people around me. And just sing and dance and praise. And, and if I could hug everybody, I would have. But, you know, instead I just sit on Zoom calls and weep at the sight of the people and the sight of the, of the preciousness of each other in this life. So... I don't know, that's about all I have to say about, you know, so when I, 
when I don't pay attention to the elections, it's because I'm attending to what I can attend to. And that is on some kind of rail that other people are attending to. God bless them. I mean, really, literally, God bless those people who are, who that's their role is to attend to that because woof, but that's not my role, you know, and they would struggle with what I have to attend to, right? So I just, I'm just going to stay with what I'm here to attend to and I'm, I'm doing it. Talking here with you is, is part of that. Wow. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for sharing this. I, I, um, I agree. I feel like so much of what's on the news and what and the debates and what we hear about the other, it's just, it's not, I, I, I'm sure it's different for everybody, but I feel like it doesn't, it's not taking me into a, an energetic space that's going to be helpful at all. Right. So I agree. Like for me, there's other things I know I need to focus on. I mean, I'll say I voted. I did vote. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I got an eye on that, but I'm, I, I can't dive in. Yeah. Well, I know that you um, you speak about this concept, this principle of thriving life, and and that um, the plan is life, and I and I feel like this everything that's happening to us, right? It it, it seems really difficult, and it seems like maybe it's taking us to the opposite of, of of life or thriving life, and but but I feel like at the root of it, it is it is it is all help, right? It is all evolving us stripping away what we don't need you know all of these all of these things and and then the jubilation too like you mentioned there are these moments of joy or moments when like this magic or light breaks through to us at a, at a level we haven't seen before that's really beautiful um so could you share about that you know this this idea of thriving life and the plan is life in the context of where we are now today what might we need to know or what, what can we, what might we need to focus on in, in that kind of context to move forward? Yeah. So I'm writing a name down here in the chat. I'm going to put it in there right now. And I'm going to recommend that you might take a moment to check out some of the writings of this amazing fellow, Bayo Akomalafe. Boy, he is rocking right now. And I, I like his outlook and attitude. So, um, thriving life at this moment. Okay, so, so first of all, we're not on Pluto, we're not on Mars, we're not on Jupiter, we're on Earth, we're on Earth, we're on Earth, we're on Earth. We have been operating as though we are going to change her laws. We've gotten so wrapped up in our own heads and what comes out of our heads, not even our hearts or our spirits or our bodies, but our heads only, which is, is good. You have to have intellect, but it's not the whole shebang. And, and yet we've been acting as though that is the thing. And so, um, so we're, we're, we're shocked right now in this moment that, um, <laughs> that things are breaking down, you know? So what I've been saying is all these systems that have been running for, I don't know, at least 5,000 years, uh, medical, education, academic, um, governance, uh, uh, those systems, they were all created without putting life at the center. And they have become the dominant presence, human presence on the planet to the detriment of all. And so, you know, now we're being called because meanwhile, outside of the election, meanwhile, outside even of Black Lives Matter, which of course they do. Uh, meanwhile, the planet is having a big response to our presence that has sort of kind of mostly fallen off our radar. Um, climate crisis, Mother Earth's response to all of our uh, imaginings. And, and so, you know, we're being called on to reach, to, to put life back at the center. And we don't know how. And as we reach into those systems to try to find an answer, we can't find one. Why? Because they weren't created 
to even consider this question. They weren't created to even consider that the plan here is actually life. That's the, that's the whole deal. That's the most important thing. That's it. That's what this earth does. She makes more life, more life, more life, more life, no matter what. She's making more life. Her economy is radical abundance and fearless generosity. That is reflected nowhere in human economy. <laughs> it, it, we're trying to run a system we're trying to run software here that, you know, we're trying to run Apple software and a PC system here. It's not happening. So she is uh, putting forth her laws to us in big ways. There is a way to be on earth and it's her way. <laughs> it's her way. Her, her way or the highway, right? And so we, um, we, we, no matter what our manifestation skills are, no matter what our star being connections are, um, that's one thing I did want to say here, whatever our practices are, there's, there, we're going to have to submit to the law of earth because that's why we were put here is to align with her and to be with her alignment. She also has an alignment that she is, is moving towards, right? And um, just checking my time here. Okay, so, so we are needing to align with her, whatever, if, I don't care, we're manifesting like mad, you know? Let's, if we don't align with her, eventually it ends up Atlantis. Eventually it ends up in magic being going astray because it's not one it usually does not acknowledge the sovereignty of all beings this is my issue with magic is it at some point decided that it did not need to adhere to the law of consent if this is a free will construct then consent is everything so we may not interfere with others whether we think we're doing good or not without consent every time we do it's a boomerang that comes back and will create the same situation again that's part of this construct we can't get around it it's the rules of this game of life on earth and so we have to align with her laws and so we're we're being we're bumping up against that right now and She's the authority. All false authorities will bow to her authority eventually. It can be no other way. So in a sense, we know how this is going to turn out. It, it, there's only one way for it to turn out. It's going to turn out in thriving life of Mother Earth. The question is, is where will you be? Where will I be in that? So if we have not considered If we have not inquired from our spiritual help, am I aligned with the law of Mother Earth? You know, my prayer has been frequently when I go out and offer tobacco in the morning, mom, show me how to be one of the greatest livers that have ever lived upon you as a human being. And I don't mean that in a grandiose way. I just mean, I want the highest. Like, as I might as well just go for the highest right now. Like, what is the highest way of living upon you? related to your heart, to that line that runs from your heart through me, out to the holy star, which we call our sun, out to the cosmos, in alignment with all, all that, that stands with life, light, and love. Show me how. Even at this late date, show me how to do this. Because I've decided that's the only game in town. Yes. Thank you. And um, I want to respect your time, or do you need to end at on the hour? Because we can. I'm I'm okay going a little further. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking maybe we could invite a, a couple of questions from the audience and see what everybody sure. out there is thinking. Um, so powerful what you've shared here. Thank you so much, Pat. As always, thank you. My honor. <laughs> so if anybody has a question. For Pat, um, I think we can probably get to just one or two questions, but if you would like to put that in the chat or on the comments in the Facebook Live, 
Um, I will. I will ask one or two of those questions that you put. Here's a good one. So Brenda's asking, how do you ask your guys for help? So um, we've sort of covered my new answer to that question because I do get ans asked that frequently. And that is, first of all, uh, we have to notice what paradigm we're operating from. <laughs> When we operate from modern world paradigm, which is also the power over paradigm, and I always draw this little pyramid, which all the fruits of all the labors down here, travel, travel, travel up to the top up here, which is what we're calling now the 1% and the 99% and et cetera. So in that paradigm, um, it one thing has to overcome another in order to have what it needs. And so it's a violent paradigm it's an oppressive paradigm. It's a scarcity paradigm. So when we're asking for help from that view, you got to ask yourself to what end? To what end am I calling on help? So in another paradigm, the way of the circle, in which everybody can see each other we hopefully can recognize that those sitting on this side, there's something in the center of the circle, let's say life. <laughs> um, those sitting on this side of the circle are gonna have a different view of that in the center than those sitting on this side of the circle, right? So we can honor other perspectives. We can trust that we're all looking to the center, looking for life, looking for our placement with life. How can I be a human being that causes all life to thrive? How can I be a human being that causes all life to thrive? So that's more the paradigm of the way of the circle. So I'm, what I'm speaking of is coming, is, is oriented towards that way of the circle, right? Um, <clears throat> so, in that, in that way, you know, what I, what I tell people is, um, and there's actually, uh, I think there's a YouTube out of me going into it into much more detail. It's called uh, the uh, First Ceremony, I think. And, and it has my name, Pat McCabe, somewhere. So I think it came out of the Fifth Son. Um, so, or the Sixth Son film, uh, maybe. But anyway, um, so the way of the offering, the way of the offering, so that's a part of the consent part too, you know? So if I go and I harvest, look at this amazing ear of corn that somebody gave me, oh, beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. Um, yeah, so in order for this to, to really fulfill its highest possibility for life, light, and love, I would need to have give an offering to the place I'm gonna plant that seed to the earth because I'm gonna disturb that earth. I'm gonna disturb organisms and such in there. So I make an offering and that's a way that a human being has to work in a consensual way with what we what we need to live, to take what we need to live. So I talk to the earth about it, I talk to the seeds about it, I talk to the water about it, I tell them what I'm thinking about, I tell them what why I want it. And I have to be honest with myself about why I want it. And whatever that honest, whatever that honest answer is for myself, it's okay to say it to them. <laughs> I need to make some money. You know, and, and if I miss, but I always add, if I'm misled here, then let me know. Maybe this growing corn endeavor is not about making money. Maybe I need to find another way to do that, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. So I'm inviting that conversation. I just try to be as real as I can, right, when I'm making that offering. So that's one part of it, of offering. But but for to receive that guidance, you know, what I tell people is, you know, and this is a gesture that humanity has used everywhere on the planet is to, to get up with that sunrise. And as that sun, that beautiful golden holy star sunlight is coming up above the horizon, 
and shining down upon my part of the mother earth and shining down upon me. Let's notice what's happening there. This is a conversation between lovers that has been going on for what we call billions of years. And it's a functional relationship. <laughs> it's a relationship that's still juicy and passionate and full of creativity and possibilities and fruitfulness and children and you know and so this conversation has been going on and and so that light comes it shines on me it shines on the mother earth i'm this child in between these passionate loving parents that have been in this conversation forever so let's notice that and then i i lift up my little baby hand with my offering and i offer it to each of the directions four directions above below at the center and i say you know can can you I invite you in all that serves life, light, and love. My, my elders, my helpers, my guides, spiritual helpers. I, I invite you in to, to be able to, to guide me in my life and my actions because I want them to align with thriving life. I want them to align with earth. I want to align myself with all of the larger movements and the micro movements that are in a definite, perfect order for life. How do I do that today? Or like before this call, I am like, I want you to come in and be in this call. So what I'm saying is them coming through also and saying, and it takes some practice. If I don't hear them right away, if I don't hear that direction, then I, I go out again. And I mean, I'm, I would recommend doing this every day for 30 days at least. If you can do it for 90 days, watch what happens to your world. <clears throat> but but if you can't hear them, you can, you can ask, you know, um, I, speak to me in a way that my conscious mind can understand and help me get that reductionist thought process hypnotizing that humanity has been through off of me so that I can participate the way human beings who've known true sustainability can participate in these conversations. Science tells us you're crazy. Um, every, everything around us tells us you can't talk to things out there. Nothing responds to you. Water doesn't talk. Stones don't talk. Stones are dead. Um, so it's, it's, you got to get over this hurdle. It takes some work sometimes. Yeah, it's a perspective shift. Thank you for sharing that. And I feel, I, I know something that I learned so strongly from you, Pat, is the, the, the offering, the offering to the earth. It's so important. Yes, thank you. Um, is, is it okay to ask one more question? Okay. Um, Monique has a really good question here. And this may be a bigger topic, but maybe you can give us a, just maybe a hint of it. Um, so she says, how do we withdraw our consent? And how do we proceed if we do not feel we've given our consent, yet things appear to be progressing anyway? Okay, so... So again, if this is a free will construct, then our consent is everything. Uh, and we've been talked out of our consent by all of these systems. Now, in my cosmology, there are oppositional forces to life and to us. So I'm not going to go into all that right here and right now at this late moment. But I'm going to say that it's not, it's not, um, we, we've been being worked on to be, we've been had illusions cast before us. We've had delusions. We've had, yes, trickster energy, exactly, um, come, come around. So we're, so we're being, you know, there's some things out there trying to trip us up. So we're not just totally fumbling, horrible beings that, you know, that's our, it's not only our nature, we're being led astray constantly, which is partly why the offerings and the, and the inviting in of that which is aligned is really, really important for us. So consent. Um, so we've been talked out of our consent. And I'm going to say that's some of Trickster's greatest work is, you know, even at birth, you know, if our mom knew, did, did our mom know that when she signed the form for a social security number for you, that she was... Um, signing you up to be collateral for the rest of your life to the United States governments to partake of your labor, your, the fruits of your labor for their own purposes, like in perpetuity? No, I'm pretty sure she didn't know that. What about the vaccines? You know, did she know what all's going on behind all that? I mean, that's a touchy subject, but you know, regardless of whether you think it's good or bad, 
we're not really taught that we can give consent there, especially a mom after birth. It's like, man, it's rough making those that come at you and you're just trying to deal with yourself and your baby and they're like, do this and this and this, right? And um, so, so we were not trained to consider our consent. We've been talked out of our consent. And so that mindset that I'm hearing in that question really comes up, which is, well, I can give my consent or I can give my dissent. I love that new word that I'm coming upon, dissent from RGB, I dissent. Um, and, and so we're kind of taught to think like, well, they're gonna do it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter. It matters, it matters, it matters. So when we don't say one way or the other, I consent or dissent, we give our consent by default. And all of these systems on earth are really counting on that from you. They're counting on you feeling like it doesn't really matter. But let me tell you why it matters. When you consciously give consent or dissent, so if you say, I dissent, and they come over that line anyway, that person, that institution, that military, that government, that IRS, whatever, when they come over that line, when you say, I dissent, it engages spiritual law. It engages spiritual law. And this is really a time when, as much as possible, we have to think about what is spiritual law here? Because human law, psh, ridiculous. And it's becoming a sham as it is right you know everybody's just kind of using the words of the law to do whatever the heck they want right now at least in this nation so you know but what is like the law you know and what is spiritual law so when once we engage spiritual law then that means that an accounting will come due we don't get to say when we may not get to witness it but I guarantee you it will come due. So it's really important for us to claim our consent and to express it, if not directly to the person. In some cases, we do need to. We will stand up and say, not here. I make my stand here with my physical body. But at a minimum, at a minimum, let us do it in our hearts. Let us say it out into the air as we're making our offering, I do not give my consent to this. And I want to declare that so that we can engage spiritual law and that accounting will come due. We're in the long game, friends. Long, long, long game here. It's not about your lifetime. It's not about your lifetime. That's what the whole seven generations thing I'm realizing is more and more is, was about. It's talking about your sphere of influence reaching out for seven generations. It's not only about your lifetime. So you declaring your descent here as we watch things fall, as we watch things we would rather not see happen, know that that is still going to play out in the generations to come. So we have to think long, long, long. Wow, yes, I have big chills, big, big truths coming through. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Well, thank you once again for being here with us today. Um, I know we've all received so much from what you have shared and it's, it's great to catch up with you a little bit. <laughs> and, um, and do you have any, any invitations for people or, um, you know, how can people learn more about your work? Anything that you would like to share? Um, let's see. Well, so, you know, there is a pretty big, um, land back movement going on right now. Maybe some of you know about it, some of you don't, where indigenous people's lands are being restored back to them. And, and that's an important thing. I'm actually involved in something uh, not quite like that, not, not exactly that, but there is an opportunity that um, has come up where I, me and my family might have an opportunity to, uh, you know, I guess I'll say secure land at one of our D Diné sacred sites. And it's a, it's a private land transaction. And so I'm gonna be starting a campaign for, for the purchase of that land. Um, and there's still a lot more details about that. So it's not exactly the land back movement because it's not going to the tribe, but our intention is to be able to have um, Diné, Diné uh, folks, um, you know, being able to, to do what we've known how to do in a place that is not impeded
by even, well, any kinds of government, let's just put it generally like that. I'm also looking up this link here so that I can put it in our chat. Sorry, I'm not so graceful. I can't do that and make it look like I'm not doing that. So, um, <laughs> what you need to do. Uh, so anyway, um, you can go to my website to look, it's not up there now, but it's going to be coming to, to look for this business about the campaign for this land, which I think is really important at this time on the planet, that some of these lands be restored to the peoples who have had thousands of year old relationship with them so that they can, um, do what they do to keep harmony and balance for us all. Um, and so that will be on my website, which is patmccabe.net. And then here is another little uh, campaign that I'm working on that I'm part of. And so maybe some of you know that COVID hit Navajo Nation, Diné Nation really, really hard. And actually all indigenous communities have been hit very hard for a lot of reasons that I won't go into right now. but. Um, if you're interested in supporting, we want to figure out how to get water out to the people. We've had drought here, and some of our water supplies have dried, dried up for the elders who actually go and haul water to live. So that's part of the problem with hand washing and such. Um, so we're working on getting water out to the people, and now it's turning cold. So we're now working on getting some firewood out to the people while COVID is still, is still um, running on our reservations. So if you feel the need, if you feel like you could donate to that fund, that Right Relations Fund, that's what's going on there for Navajo Nation and COVID relief. Um, so yeah, those are a couple things. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm mostly listening for what needs my energy. Lots of things calling, but what should, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Yes, yes. Well, thank you for sharing these. I, and I put a link to your website on there too. Mm, um, so we can, we can check back there. Yes. Well, thank you again, Pat. Um, really, really so wonderful to hear these, these wisdom transmissions and, and receive them. Um, and this is so much of what our world needs and this, this community needs to know now at this time. So deep gratitude to you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Best wishes on, the, on this whole series and all of your work. Yes, and your you. home and your family, your children. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Blessings for your family as well. All right. All thank you, work. everybody. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. Okay, well, I think we can all take a little bit of time and just let this sink in, um, let it soak in, immerse in this, in this wisdom that Pat has shared with us today. Uh, just so moving, I had chills so many times during her talk and I'm, I know you all did too from based on the comments. So, um, Yes, let's just take some time. I am going to close down the Zoom link um, just for a little bit here, and then we will open back up in 12 minutes, um, which will be at 2.30 p.m. New York time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and that would be 6.30 p.m. UK. So be sure to jump back on then, jump back on Zoom, jump back on Facebook Live. Um, we have Dr. Marie Mabuni coming up next. And she's talking about, she's gonna talk about future reporting, um, which I wanna give you the more detailed description of that before we leave. So future reporting, access and merge with the wisdom and intelligence of your timelines. So you definitely do not want to miss that. We're gonna be coming back at 2.30 uh, New York time to share, to hear from Dr. Marie about that. And then also following Dr. Marie, we will have Priya Matani um, at 4 p.m. New York time speaking about creative revolution, why schools must change. And following Priya, we will uh, gather back again with me and Verdeluz for our closing ceremony. Please make sure to be here for the closing ceremony. We have so much beauty to share with you as well as how, we, how do we move forward now? The festival is ending. What do we do next? What do we do now? Um, and so really hope that you will all be there um, and we can't wait to share with you in that space as well. So I know I don't want it to end either. <laughs> Somebody just put that in the chat. This has been such a powerful week. So beautiful, so much magic, so many blessings coming through. Um, but we can, we can continue coming back to all these transmissions, all the energy, all the healing, all the love, all the community, and the Facebook group will be ongoing. And Verda Luz and I are going to share something really amazing with you um, next week. So can't wait, can't wait to see what will come next. Well, lots of love, everybody. I'll see you back here in about 11 minutes. Mwah.